In this video, we will show how you make polymer tandem solar cells on the mini world cooler. Now, we've cho chosen here today uh, to demonstrate how you both make them on a reflective substrate. And Deshan here in the background, she's actually right now coding the first junction on a reflective, coded reflective substrate. Uh, later on, we'll see how, how she does it on a semi transparent substrate. Now, the tandem solar cell stack is, of course, a very complicated stack in contrast to the single junction that, that may comprise five or six printed and coded layers. The tandem solar cell stack easily uh, adds up to 12 or 14 layers. And there you need a good degree of control over your film forming method, your, the way you access your foil, the way you operate the machine. And here the mini roll coder, um, uh, the development of the mini roll coder really on, enables uh, the realization of very complex multilayer, organic multilayer stacks. Now it's obvious that when you make a multilayer stack, like a tandem stack of say 12 or 13 layers, any error you introduce either in your processing method uh, during one of the processing steps may accumulate and will eventually destroy your end result. And the mini roll coder has the advantage, in, in specifically in this context, that you are able to build up your complex stack without touching the surface of the foil. That means that once we have wrapped the foil around the, the drum on the mini roll coder, we leave it there and we gradually coat one layer, next layer, next layer, next layer, etc., until the stack is complete and the device is ready to be tested. And in a scaling context, this is extremely useful because it allows you to eliminate the source of error that, that is inevitable if you have to touch the surface as you do in a large scale machine where you will have transport of foil over many rollers. This is not to say that it's not possible. We've certainly done it on several occasions, made successful tandem solar cell modules using full roll-to-roll -roll processing, running over hundreds of rollers through such a process. But when you are either learning or developing or building a stack using new materials, new inks, the mini roll coder really provides the environment that is needed before you can step up to larger machinery. It's an advantage to have several mini roll coders where uh, in cases where you want to build up different stacks, different architectures at the same time. And here we have, as I mentioned before, the reflective uh, electrode, the reflective tandem, where the first printed electrode is non-transmissive uh, and uh, a coded silver electrode. And then you start by processing the low band gap junction and followed by the wide band gap junction. And the illumination of this type of device is from, from the outside, from this side. So all illumination has to take through the coded and printed stack. Here we have a different type of substrate. It's a flex tote. So it's a printed, flexor printed silver grid with a rotary screen printed P-dot, semi-transparent P-dot electrode. Uh, and as you can see, there's a slight blue hue. So there is absorbance, optical absorbance from the P-dot. It is semi-transparent, but it certainly does absorb in the near infrared, which is not ideal for the tandem uh, solar cells, or not as ideal as, as could be. This is where, why we have on the third mini roll coder here a uh, silver nanowire uh, electrode that has been printed, fully printed also. Uh, and this is, as you can see, much more transmissive. Uh, and in both those two cases, illumination will eventually be from the bottom side, so from the, the side that is now facing the, the drum. Yeah, so here, now the Shan finished the, the, on the reflective tandem, and she'll now move on here and mount the slot die head on the next uh, experiment. And we'll now see how she coats the, the wide band gap semiconductor on the flex throat. And for these two stacks here, where we shine light from the from the what is the bottom side now, we will start by coating the wide band gap semiconductor, followed by the low band gap semiconductor. And in this case, the processing of the very back electrode is not very critical from an optical point of view because we are gonna not gonna shine light through it. Whereas in the first case with the reflective tandem, the final electrode is extremely critical and has to be highly transparent. And, and uh, this is, of course, the challenge in, in the reflective tandem. It certainly also has advantages. And once the, the first junction, whether it's a low band gap junction in the reflective uh, tandem device or the wide band gap junction in the uh, transmissive tandem device, we will need, after having slot die coded the, this active layers, these active layers, we will need to apply the intermediate layer. This is a very critical layer. It requires several things. Firstly, it has to be optically very transmissive. It has to block 
uh, carrier transport and enable the recombination of the holes and electrons from the two respective junctions in the finished device. And uh, one especially critical uh, aspect from the processing point of view is that after we've realized the or created the recombination layer, which is which comprises uh, or is comprised of peter and zinc oxide in this case, we will need to uh, apply a second junction. In the reflective case, this would be the wide band gap semiconductor. In those two transmissive cases, either with peter or silver nanowires, it will be the uh, low band gap semiconductor. And those are also coded for mechanic solvents. So the recombination layer here has to be impervious uh, to the solvents that are used to dissolve the second semiconductor. If it is not impervious, solvent will penetrate and will destroy the junction and we will not observe tandem function. And typically, of course, uh, you see this as a low voltage. So you will get a device that is operational. It's a solar cell for sure, but you will not get, get the voltage that roughly corresponds to uh, the sum of the, the individual voltages that you typically obtain for single junctions with those materials, less some loss in the recombination layer, which typically comprise maybe 0.2 or 0.3 volts. And once the recombination layer has been made, the last junction, the second junction, is applied, uh, following exactly the same methodology as, as uh, you saw in the beginning with the first junctions. In the final step, the back egg electrode is applied using slot die coating of a uh, combination of p-dots, and then the device is finished off with a printed silver electrode, ready to be tested. I hope that you find that this shows the power of uh, the mini roll coder shows clearly that it can be used for single junctions and for very complex operations such as the tandem uh, junction shown here for three different architectures using a completely different set of materials. So it's a versatile platform that enables a wide uh, range of processing uh, of both materials and, and, and device architectures.